Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem I got from one of my subscribers and here's a problem. The gel image below shows 7 alleles 1 through 7 in order of size with 1 being the smallest and 7 being the largest. And here is 3 questions. As usual I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve this problem on your oven first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. So before I will show you step by step how to solve and uh, this problem and answer these three questions. Uh, first, let me explain you some theory. Take a look, this is human karyotype. So we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Uh, most of them are homologous and we have two non-homologous chromosomes which is X and Y chromosome, but you also may have two homologous chromosomes, which is X, this is going to be in this case female karyotype, but we see this is male karyotype because X and Y chromosomes are present here. And for example, if we do DNA fingerprinting, we are going to uh, use many loci on many uh, chromosomes in order to make DNA fingerprinting, but today I'm going to show you just what happens if we analyze just single locus. And if we would have, say, on the chromosome number four in this position certain locus, then uh, on the homologous chromosome we also have the same locus. This is not random locus, scientists have found certain places and locus is just a place on the chromosome that is highly variable. All genes on both chromosomes which we inherited from uh, our parents would go in the same order, would have almost the same sequence. Sometimes uh, mistakes might happen or mutations, but should be relatively the same. But scientists have chosen on purpose certain places on our chromosomes where our genome is highly variable. What does it mean? Let's say that in this locus on this chromosome, which we got from the father side, we have a certain repeat A, T, G, A, T, G, A, T, G, which is flanked by certain known sequence to us for which we make primers. So we can using uh, PCR can uh, make multiple copies, uh, billions of copies of this sequence. So billions of copies and let's say that from the chromosome which we inherited from the mother side, we have only two repeats of the same uh, sequence A, T, G. A, T and G, which is flanked by the same stable sequence for which we have primers, which is going to be the same as here. So the same primers are going to be used for the same locus. This time we are going to get PCR product, which is going to be slightly smaller than uh, the first one because here we have only two repeats, so six nucleotides and here we have three repeats and nine nucleotides. So what's going to happen if we will run a gel electrophoresis for this person, what we would see. If we load here, uh, this going to be uh, not a separate bunch of uh, this size and this size, they're actually going to be mixed together because again, we doing PCR using the same primers. And of course, we are going to get a mixture. And when we run a gel, we're going to see that those bands that is made from longer sequence would group together and would travel together and those which are smaller also would group together and travel together 
and because they are smaller they would travel faster and to the longer distance. So this mixture of different sizes molecules would separate to two bands. So here is going to be one band which is bigger molecules would travel smaller distance and molecules which are smaller would travel longer distance. This is how we would know that this person is heterozygous for this locus. So he has two alleles which of the different size. So alleles not uh, necessary have to be genes. It can be anything we choose. In this particular case we are looking if this person at this locus has uh, alleles of the different size or of the same size. And of course we also would be interested what the size of these alleles. So along with this DNA we also preload our gel with other DNA mixture of DNA of the different sizes and we call this ladder. When we run a gel this is done simultaneously we would run uh, also this ladder because we know the sizes of the ladder we know that the one that is heaviest here the size of the nine bases. The one which is here we would know is of the size of six bases and let's say this one the size of three bases. If we have a certain reference point we would know that if this ladder here band is six bases then this one also have to be six bases. If we know that this band on the reference ladder is nine bases then this uh, band which is unknown of this person for this locus is also nine bases. And of course if such things also might happen that person who inherit two chromosomes from different parents may have the same number of repeats in this locus on both chromosomes. So instead of uh, two bands here we just would see one band. That is going to be a mixture of both loci but because uh, two loci of the same size we would see only one band. Maybe it sometimes can be more brighter than the rest bands because we would also expect in this band double number of fragments of the DNA but this is not uh, necessary to be so but sometimes we can see such bands brighter than the rest. So now let's return to our questions and the first question in this sample of 11 individuals how many times allele 3 appear. This is letter here reference letter and as you see this is known sizes for each band of this letter. Here is individual number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. We also told that we have 7 alleles in the order of size with 1 being the smallest and 7 being the largest. So which one is the smallest, this one or this alleles here? Take a look at this letter. This one uh, travels smallest distance, it's heaviest. So we know that DNA was run from here to here. Lightest molecules travel of course longest distance. Let's put wells here. So wells on this side of the gel and we have 11 people so 11 wells in which we load a mixture of the alleles from the same locus and this is uh, what we see how these alleles spread through the gel according to their sizes and this is reference letter. The smallest would be these two alleles and we call them allele number one. So let's say this is 
going to be alleles number one. This one, which is going to be next in size, is going to be allele number two. Let me use different color. This is going to be allele number three. And this is going to be allele number four. This is going to be alleles number five. They're of, on, of the same size. This is going to be alleles six. And the last one is going to be allele seven. So we have seven alleles from one to seven of the different sizes. So how many times allele number three appear? So one, two, and this is allele number three. So one, two, and three. Why I count this as two alleles? Because this person, as you see, don't have any other allele. That means that this person is homozygous for this allele number three. And in this band, he actually has two alleles. So one, two, three, and four. This person is heterozygous, so I count uh, this uh, allele only once. So one, two, three, and four. This is going to be uh, an answer for the first question. So appear four times. Question B, how many individuals are homozygous? Let's take a look. For example, individual number one is heterozygous. We see two bands. Individual number two is homozygous. We see only one band. Individual number three is heterozygous, two bands. Individual number four is homozygous because only one band. So second individual who is homozygous, individual number five heterozygous, six heterozygous, individual seven is homozygous. So let's circle. Individual 8 heterozygous, 9 heterozygous, 10 heterozygous, 11 heterozygous. So our answer to question B is going to be 3. 3 individuals here, homozygous. And the last question, if this gel would correctly reflect allele frequencies in population, what is the frequency of the allele 5? So here is allele number 5. And these two alleles, also alleles number five. They're of the same size as you see. Let's count. One allele here, two, three, and this individual is homozygous. So two alleles here, four and five, and six. This individual heterozygous, so we count only once. So we have six alleles, six alleles, of the size five. Now, what is the total number of alleles? We have 11 individuals and each has two chromosomes and on each chromosome, he has a locus. So total number of alleles would be 22. And the frequency of the allele number five would be six out of 22. If you need an answer in percentage form, then we have to multiply this number by 100. And the answer is going to be 27.3%. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.